Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and we are at Silverstone Auctions again. At Silverstone, we're in the wing and there are two halls of cars and bikes and automobilia I'm looking at here and there's an outside area. I've had a count up, there are 65 bikes on sale here and 132 uh, cars in the, in the catalogue, big catalogue as well. We're here on Thursday, this is set up day, 25th and it's also qualifying day so we're going to be fighting this sound outside as they're going around here because it's practice and qualifying today ready for the racing tomorrow and on saturday and sunday the sale itself starts tomorrow so it's a huge rush so friday they're going to be selling the motorbikes off saturday all the cars go on saturday they are all still arriving. We're still waiting for actually the Kuntash in the sale. I've seen there's 10 E-types in this sale. I think there was um, five Cosworth, Ford Cosworths of various flavours. Princess Diana's Ford Escort is in this sale as well. Tom is quaking because how long is this video going to be with all that lot to cover? But anyway, we're going to go downstairs and I'll show you some of my highlights of this sale over the next two days. Right, I'm going to kick off in this hall because it's a bit quieter and it has a Porsche 930 LE in it. I know I like these turbos, 1989, obviously I have my 930S, this is very close to one of those. Very special car in the period. You recognise them from these vents here, some have side sills on them, this one hasn't. Only 53 came into the UK LE spec and there's quite a lot of changes with this car. It's higher horsepower, 330 horsepower instead of 300 of the normal 930. And they do that by quite a lot of mechanical changes. It's a bigger turbo, a quad exhaust at the back, and a much bigger intercooler on top. And they're recognizable also because they've got a front of the air dam here. There's an oil cooler hiding behind there because of the extra horsepower. And they were, God, they were expensive. 84,000 list this car. It's about 50% more than your regular 930 back in period. I think they're highly collectible, especially with so few made of 53 into the UK. And this is guided at 140 to 180,000 pounds, but it is only 25,000 miles from new. I quite like it in white as well, thinking it's the 80s. And next to the turbo is this, the M3. Now this is 1988 E30 M3, another 80s icon. And I've picked this one out because this is the Evo 2. And you'll notice the bonnet is open because this has the most spectacular engine, I think, in all the M3s. Look at that, with the motorsport colours over it. The Evo 2 just had hotter cams. It was 220 horsepower, so more horsepower. But this is before the 2.5 arrived. This was the ultimate um, e 30 M3 and I, I think I'll just leave the bonnet up in the garage if I own this car. Quite an interesting one this one, it was I think it's a French car and it's got a few kilometres on it, 177,000 kilometres in it but these are highly collectible as we now know. You recognise an Evo, I think you can see at the front it's got an um, a air dam that juts out, a sort of splitter at the front, should have extra on the back I think as well. Yeah, a little extra spoiler at the back. And this one, even with that high kilometres, is guided at 80 to 100,000 pounds. But that's the M3, E30 M3 for you. So collectible these days. Just pointing out this Toyota, this is, this is the AE86 Corolla. And I remember this, it's 1987, this example. They have a twin cam engine in it, 1600 twin cam, rear drive, little coupe. I mean, a hidden gem from the 80s. I sort of know them quite well because when I used to sprint and hill climb my little Lotus Land, there was a guy, Guy Fawkes, he had one of these. He never actually beat me, but I was always impressed how fast this thing could pedal around circuits and up hill climbs. It's guided at 40 to 50,000 pounds, but it's one of those go find another type of cars. Ah, this Lancia um, Evo, this is the Evo 6. Um, this was the car when i was uh, starting evo in what year is this 1999 i i banished these from the cover of evo because i didn't want people to think we were a japanese sort of tuning uh, magazine but they were incredible and they really took the fight to in the impreza that had had its own up until this point and it was rally art in um sort of birmingham outskirts i'm trying to think where they were no it was rally art who brought them into the uk 
I've never seen one as clean as this because they're always sort of tweaked to death. But this one looks utterly standard with her Caro's, 26,000 miles, 30 to 40,000 pounds. Another car that's really climbing in value. And then, well, real royalty in the 80s car, was 1990, the 190E 2.5 16 Evolution 2. Quite a mouthful, but obviously this is the one that took the fight to the M3 E30 on the, on the touring car circuit, especially in Europe. And the Evo 2 is the mad Mercedes, the maddest one of all, with these incredible aero additions. So the big splitter at the front, the big bat wing at the back, and a sort of, sort of hood over the rear window. Bizarre, there's sort of four-door saloon as well. Beautiful quality car. I remember these in period and this, they never did a manual change particularly well, Mercedes, um, but iconic car and mighty expensive today. This one is guided at 155 to 175,000 pounds. But what a rare car. Right, I wanted to show you this Vauxhall Lotus Carton. There is actually an Opal Lotus Carton over there, left-hand drive one, but this one, Silverstone Auctions think, is the best one they've ever seen. 26,000 miles from new, and the current owner has been absolutely fastidious to make this the best in the world. So he's discovered that basically rot is a bit of a problem on Lotus Carton, because when they added the extra bits of body, there was no protection where they screwed it to the body. So they do have sort of rust issues hidden under the skin, but not this one. Um, interior is perfect, but you can sort of see the standard of this car. If I lift the bonnet on it, have you ever seen a Lotus Carton engine like that. I've just been told that even this bonnet strut he made sure was anodized in the right colour. It had to be done several times until it matched exactly how it left the factory. I've never seen a Lotus Carton quite like this and you've got to think these are getting on, they're 30 years old now, but my goodness they made such an impact when they first appeared and this 175 mile an hour top speed and whether that was right for a four-door saloon but here we are in the age of 200 mile an hour four-door saloons but this was the daddy back in the day 1991 and this one is guided at 80 to 100 thousand pounds now there's a number of mercedes pagodas in this sale but i just wanted to show you this one because the history of it is fascinating this is none other than sterling mossy's pagoda he won looking at its history if the one story to read on the website on silverstone's website read the backstory to this car and how um, sir sterling moss managed to get this car from mercedes he used to obviously race for uh, mercedes um, he won the british grand prix in a mercedes and when they came out of the pagoda they were going to do the um, a bigger engine with a six cylinder in, injected engine this is the 230 this one but this particular car sterling moss managed to persuade the factory to fit the not quite out in production 250 version of the straight six injected engine and he actually collected it from the factory. There's a wonderful photograph in the, I don't know if you can see that, but there he is being waved off from Mercedes in Stuttgart in his brand new Pagoda, and that's this car. He had another interesting feature fitted to his own Pagoda, and that is this weird sort of rear hatch to vent out when you have the hardtop fitted, this is what he had. He didn't have air conditioning in those days, but Sterling Moss somehow persuaded the factory to create this vent in the thing. He then sold the car. Weirdly, in 1970, it was resprayed into this colour, so this is not its original colour. And then another individual bought this car in 1974 and has owned it ever since. But he moved it into his house <laughs> and he had it in, he's had a sort of snooker wing, and this car lived in the house in the wing. But the car was regularly started and things, so the backstory to it is extraordinary. It's a very famous pagoda within the circle Mercedes, and it's sort of great to see it here on sale. It sort of needs a bit of work. If I lifted the, um, the engine, it, it isn't particularly shiny. It's not been prepped, and I can see one of a few scars. But with a backstory like that, it's a very special car, and it is guided at 100 to 120,000 pounds for a serious bit of Sir Sterling Moss history.
there's no less than three Rolls-Royce core niches in this sale. I've never seen three together. But this one really interests me. This is a 1973 car, but in 1979, a certain Maurice Gibb of the Bee Gees bought it and then owned the family have owned it until 2012. So think of the history with that car right at peak um, Bee Gees. There's Maurice Gibb floating around in this black cool niche. Um, lovely interior, the red leather interior, and a real period pioneer stereo in it as well, which I'm sure was used to huge effect. There's also this one, which I've never seen. This is a Corniche 5, apparently, and the very last. They, they thought they were going to um, build 50 of them, but they actually only built 15 of them. So it's the very last Rolls-Royce Corniche that's got 6.75. It was during the VW sort of takeover time. So a real bit of history there. But look at this red Quattro here. I think the Quattro really suits red. It just sets it off. We've had a couple in the sale before here at Silverstone Orchards I've seen and they've been a sort of silver as a white metallic but the red one to me is an iconic one one of the last 50 produced um, 72,000 miles and wow have these climbed in value as people want to put a quattro away one of these iconic original Audis and this one is guided at 70 to 80 thousand pounds now as I mentioned at the beginning there are 10 e-types in this sale trying to pick which one the feature is hard. If you ever wanted a lavender blue V12 E-Type, there you are, is that one. But I just thought I'd stop at this one because this is an extraordinary E-Type, 1970 Series 2 Roadster, yet it started life as a coupe, <laughs> which I just find extraordinary. They made a coupe into a Roadster because they weren't exactly rare Roadsters, but it's been further enhanced. It has a um, quite a trick engine and big valve engine in it. It's got the five-speed gearbox in it, in it and other enhancements, and it presents beautifully. I mean, absolutely perfect when you look round it. And because it's a converted coupe, it's actually cheaper than perhaps a Roadster Series 2 would be. This one is guided at 50 to 60,000 pounds, but it looks terrific to me. More V12 right-hand drive. This, uh, this is the last edition, so this is the final run out there with these black ones. They have a chromative plaque in it. They're quite collectible. 100 to 150,000 for that one. The Primo on there, 90 to 120,000 pounds, but that is low mileage, 35,000. Um, outside bonnet lock one, fetching all the money. I, I haven't looked over it, but 250 to 280,000 pounds. I'm told this is a particularly nice XK150S. It's been um, prepped. They say, well, they say it's probably the best XK150S we've ever had to offer, say 120 to 140,000. I want to dash, there is this one at XKSS as well. I always think they look slightly odd, these. They're, they're an acquired taste for me, but they were, this one has been beautifully done if that's what you want. This is the D type, in effect. Um, this has been built up 70 to 90,000. But what I want to show you is this V12 Series 3 Coupe with the hard top. I haven't seen a V12 E tape like this one before. I think it really suits the silver and it's just been restored. It's done 1680 miles since uh, restoration. Looks correct on its wire wheels. It's got stainless steel exhaust system on it, it's five speed get rag gearbox in it. Um, enhanced, it's got lightweight um, flywheel, it's got special injection on it, all the cooling's been looked at, blue interior, blue hood as well. And I'm getting so much enjoyment out of my XJ V12 Coupe 1978, I see this E-Type as being very similar to that. And I think as an ownership uh, proposition, it's a real change from the regular straight six E-types to stand out this V12. The V12 engine is a short stroke engine, it loves to rev. So it's a very different character to having the straight six engine. And this car is guided at 100 to 120,000 pounds. All right. Now, there's a number of race cars in this sale as well. I just haven't really got the time to cover it. But another really interesting one is this 1960 X Works Le Mans Lotus Elite. There was various reasons why it didn't actually race in 1960 with it. 
but it's been rebuilt by uh, Lotus Classic and I'm told this is a really competitive car so I suspect you'll see it out at Goodwood Revival and that sort of thing in the future. Guided at 200 to 250,000 pounds. I used to not think much of the MGB um, as a race car but now after well, this car is 1964 they have really made these cars very quick and very competitive and hats off to them but that is an you know, incredibly competitive car and FRI papered and yet it's only 30 to 35,000 pounds. If you're getting into classic racing, that's a really good place to start. Now this is the Omega uh, Lotus Carton I was talking about earlier. So left-hand drive, 60 to 70,000, slightly more miles, but I've not ever seen one in a sale before. Be really interested to see how much that one makes. <sighs> and then our 34, Nissan GTR. I've driven these loads in the past during my Evo days and they always were spectacular. This one sort of came with a new screen that it gave us boost and all the various technical things where the power's been sent etc. It was a real you know um, computer game tied to drive experience but boy did it go down the road and I think this brutish look is actually a really iconic skyline for the future. Getting very collectible, this one is guided at 70 to 90 thousand pounds and the previous owners owned it for 14 years. I'm not surprised because the drive experience is quite something. Now a Subaru P1, there's two P1s in the sale, there's a quite a large number of Impressors in this sale including the World Rally car which I saw over there. I d I'm going to get to the Escorts in a moment, what I really want to show you though is this Countach, it's just rolled in. Now as you know, I've owned a Countach now for, I think it's 12 years. Um, and the anniversary was the one that came after my 5000 QV. And the anniversary is a very interesting Countach because basically it's the best driving Countach of all, but it's a slight Marmite because of the anniversary sort of body additions that they put on it. It's also the most numerous Countach ever produced, 650 of the 2000 Countach are anniversaries. And I did actually ask Harashu Pagani, who's infamous because he did the body design during his time at Lamborghini, why the modifications were made to the body uh, over the QV. And it was all to do with safety. If you actually look at the rear, to sell this car in 1989, they needed to actually get uh, um, protect the exhaust because the exhaust protruded from the body shell and Harashi told me that purely safety is why it gained this sort of additional bumper here to bring it beyond the, um, the exhaust and this impact area here. The strakes was something he added, I, I saw in the catalogue they said they have trouble with cooling, Countach don't actually have trouble with cooling, that was pure style, you've got to think it was the Ferrari Testarossa out at the time, they'd already added side skirts on some QV, so it was an extension beyond that as well, and this was basically to make it easier to make, because these originally were riveted and now it became part of the bodywork, so Horatio didn't do the styling to try and make it look better, they were forced to do it for safety reasons. The other thing I've noticed on this Countach, this, there was um, electric seats offered on the QV and electric windows, and they live under this flap here. So this is how you actually adjust the seats on these. The slight problem with that, it actually puts the seat slightly higher because it's got electric motors underneath. So still, there's only 2,000 Countach in existence. It's a super rare car and prices are really climbing on Countach at the moment. Looks beautiful condition one. I really like this sort of metallic red rather than being a solid red as well. And this car with only 18,000 kilometres from new, um, 19 year ownership uh, is guided at 260 to 300,000 pounds. I suggest it will probably make a fair bit more than that. Okay, well this black Ford Escort RS Turbo is attracting the most interest in this sale because the first owner was none other than Princess Di. She was going to have a Ford Cabriolet and the, um, the security at the Royal Palace said, no, I really don't think we can do that. Ford got involved and they said, I'll tell you what, why don't you have a turbo? Which, this is the car. And it was the first one in black. All the previous ones have been white. 
What a piece of history that is. It's offered with no reserve. I have no idea what it's going to make, but I can remember seeing this in newspaper articles and something. It was a pretty cool car for your the princess um, of the, in the UK to be driving an RS Turbo. It comes with a huge amount of history, as you'd imagine. It's 1985, and it's one of those in a sale, you'll probably read about it in the newspaper, Sunday papers, when it sells on Saturday. Well, we dashed outside because this is the lunch break on track, so hopefully we can get a few minutes to look around the cars outside in relative quietness. So kicking off with this with this Spectre Defender, a subject I know really quite a lot about having owned one of these cars, and there were sort of seven of these um, sold some time ago, and this eighth one, well, actually, they never were intended to get this back on the road because it was quite badly damaged. It's the one that had the pyrotechnics underneath it, and it had to flip over and caught fire. But when the first one sold for so much money, they think, hang on a minute, we better rebuild that one as well, and that's this one. So this is absolutely was in the film and had a starring role actually in the stunt itself. I can always tell an original Spectre Defender, weirdly, by odd bits of corrosion, like on the wheel here, and I can see on the suspension, because the filming was done in Austria in January, and it's a snow scene, and the roads were, um, had salt on them, so I can always tell an original Spectre, just because it's got little bits of rust. Character, I would term it. This one is um, for sale unreserved, so it'd be very interesting what it makes. It's absolutely pucker. Was the film the stunt one that did the big stunt, caught fire and rolled, etc.? Um, I would expect it would be about 150, 200,000 pounds. Just wanted to show you this Subaru Impreza. It's an STI, but my goodness, it's had some work done to it. 430 horsepower, 400 pound foot of torque, it says here, 2.35 litre engine, 39,000 miles from new. Russell Bolgin and Evo used to came up with the coin of the phrase weapon grade. I suggest this is probably weapon grade in Prezza. Um, and guided after all that spend, 25 to 30,000 pounds, just to make life a bit more interesting. It's now started the rain. We're just going to review the cars. We have to do it now because the only tyre is going to be quiet enough. There's a 612 in um, the Scaglietti, um, so the full seat of Ferrari, estimated 60 to 70,000 pounds. There are two Continental R's in the sale. Wide body, so like the T, Continental T was the shorter wheelbase, the sporting one, but they did build some R's with the longer wheelbase and still the fat arches at the back. I particularly like this one because it's got the turned aluminium dash and I think that's what they should all have. 55 to 65,000 for that one. Oh, it's not a P1 there. Um, I haven't got time to do th that one, but I ought to have Audi RS2 suddenly getting collectible. It was the first one that came. Audi sent its well known story down to Porsche, um, straight stick turbo engine with it. They upgraded the brakes so it actually has Porsche on the calipers of the brakes on it. Um, I love the blue, they came with uh, certain colours and they added Alcantara on the seat, so they really look pretty special inside. It's a diff lock, we noticed rear diff lock on it. And now very collectible, very few low mileage examples around, although this is one of them, 33,000 miles from new, guided at 70 to 80,000 pounds. Weirdly, for some reason, one of my favourite Ferraris is this one. Now, you think it's a 308 GT4, it is not, it is a 208 three, um, GT4. So this is the Batoni um, designed 2 plus 2 Ferrari, pre-Mondial, that sort of thing. Um, but this has the 2 litre V8 engine in it that uh, uh, Ferrari did because of a taxation change in Italy that penalised any car with more than 2 litre en size engine. Beautiful condition, Bob Houghton um, prepped and guided at 40 to 50,000 pounds. Now, I mentioned there's a lot of Cosworth, Ford Cosworth in this sale. I think there's five. This is probably my favorite because this is rare. This is the Sapphire Cosworth and it took over from the Sierra Cosworth. I am told that they handle really well because they're a stiffer body shell being the four door design rather than the hatchback design and initially they were two-wheel drive and then they moved to four-wheel drive. This is a two-wheel drive, basically owned almost one family owner from new and 34,000 miles this one. 
you just don't see them uh, in this sort of condition. Looks like perfect. I can see a, actually a, a cigarette burn on the seat, but that's it as far as I can see. And guided at 35 to 40,000 pounds for one, a car that actually probably drives even better than the Sierra Cosworth, I am told. Now, Corvette Singray. I, I can't get over the age of this car. This is 1971, this car. Um, mileage, 15,200 miles, it says here. Big block, 454 cubic inches. That's huge. My brain isn't clever enough to actually work out how many cc. I think it's a six or seven litre engine, something like that. Side pipes on it, glorious Americana. What I can't get over is the guide on this. This is 30 to 35,000 pounds. I don't know, it's an awful lot of car for the money. Not quite as big as this, 440. Uh, so slightly smaller engine, Plymouth. Look at it. What a mad thing this is. Um, excellent soundtrack, they say. Is this, uh, yeah, it's actually not a stick shift. It's still auto, 70,000 miles. 30 or 35,000, two bits of glorious Americana for you. And I'm getting very wet. This one also caught my eye. Never thought I'd see one of these. This is by TWR. This has a six litre V12 in it and a manual gearbox conversion as well. Uh, meant to be the quickest XJC going. This is actually has the T-roof, so it's separate panels and the, not the full convertible. Super, super rare car, mileage 60,000 miles, guided at 30 to 35,000 miles. It's really raining quite hard now, and I would have loved to have shown you that uh, Ford Capri Tickford Turbo over there, but it's probably too wet to actually feature. But go look it up on the website, a very special Ford Capri. Let's go inside. I really haven't got time to feature um, all the bikes. As you can probably gather though, these three are very special because they're right under the podium here where the auction is going to be. There. Mike Halewood replicas. There are a number of these, but I've never seen one quite as tight as this one. This is a super early, like pre-production time. I was walked through it. Um, it hasn't got the split fairing there. It is utterly pristine. It is no miles. How many miles? 1,439 miles from new. Look it up, uh, lot 349. It will fetch quite a lot of money that. But what an iconic bike that is. Bruff Superior, before my time, but worshipped. MV Augusta. Now this is another one. This has only done push miles, I think. Yeah, 42 miles. Last time it sold, it had done 41 miles. So some poor chap has pushed that for a whole mile since it was last on sale. I can't remember if it's 750 or 850, that one. I think it's 750. But what I wanted to show you was this little corner here. There is a um, Subaru Impreza 22B. Very tidy, 100 to 120,000 pounds. I'm not actually going to do a walk round it but everybody knows about 22b super tidy what i wanted to show you was this little lancia delta integrale evolution one evo one the first evo in effect it, it wasn't evo one in the day because we didn't know it was going to be an evo two coming and i like these because the first evo added all the pumped up body the bigger wheels 16 inch wheels the additional um, suspension travel it got slightly more horsepower and it's the look that we all want our Integrales to be. The thing about the Evo 2, which has now become even more collectible, is it had to go Evo 2 because they had to put a catalyst on it. And they actually fitted a smaller turbo and a different engine map. I prefer the bigger turbo, non-cap version, which is the Evo 1, and that's this one. The other thing I like about them is the interiors. They had a leather interior that I think looks the part. It's so Italian and the Evo 2 got an Alcantara interior and they wear and look a bit tired very quickly. This has actually done 110,000 kilometres from new and it's been long-term ownership, looks super smart to me and guided at 48 to 56,000 pounds. That's nearly half the value of an Evo 2 and I think that's way better value for actually going to own it and drive it, that's the one I would pick. I want to feature this black 930 turbo here because this is a 1976 three litre car and it's black hiding in the corner of a black hall so it's very hard to see. This has had 43 years of single private ownership. It has been repainted some time ago but the three litre cars are getting collectible, the 930s, the original 930 
They don't have quite as much horse as I think they're 260 horsepower instead of 300, but they were a fair bit lighter and they drive differently as well. And I think it's, it's no surprise they're becoming collectible. Guided 110 to 150,000 pounds. We need to crack on because there's another hall next door we haven't even covered yet. First car I want to pick up in this second hall. What is this? Look at this Cleo Williams phase one. Lovely to see one in this sort of condition. It's been restored, the end is all rebuilt. It's got new old stock sort of parts in it. The interior looks very good. It's actually done 101,000 miles, but it's really interesting how these are now getting collectible and it's guided at 28 to 36,000 pounds. A really nice example. But look at this, I'm a complete sucker for this. This is the Lotus Esprit. I want to call it the JPS colours. It wasn't actually called JPS car in period. It was the world championship car. Lotus built not very many of these. It's up on the website how many they built. This is number 68, but it's a handful of them. And boy, do they look smart. Cesario bodywork and then in this gold and black bodywork. I love this is the S2 version of the Esprit. This is before the turbo came out and that meant it had this clear screen at the back, so none of the louvers that came with the turbo edition. Very clean design and obviously collectible. I also like it because it hasn't got a lever interior. They did peculiar lever, sort of rough lever, and doesn't wear very well. This looks much better with it again, gold and black interior as well. This is all so being restored this car its mileage is 72,000 miles and guided at 50 to 60,000 pounds they're really on the up I think the Esprit now 308 GTS I wasn't going to stop by this car but I quite like the color of it in this sort of gunmetal metallic and the Bordeaux red interior really looks nice and then I noticed it was 308 GTS. It's not the injection version. This is Carburetta version, 1980. And you have to remember they only added injection to get round emission laws. They didn't actually add any horsepower. The Carburetta version was the more powerful version. And it's guided at 42 to 46,000 pounds. And that's because this car has actually covered 130,000 miles. You'd never guess looking at it, but it's been properly enjoyed and ready for another owner. But yeah, really nice colour combination on that car. Here's another of the Sierra Codsworth. I like this one. It's one family ownership for 35 years, 67,000 miles. And yeah, doesn't seem a huge amount of money for me. Uh, 45 to 55,000 pound guide on it. Now this is an interesting car. This is a 911R. It's uh, obviously a, a replica of a 911R because they only made a handful. I think it was about 20 cars produced in all. The base car was actually a 1975 2.7S, so quite a valuable Porsche. And the R was this super lightweight version they did very early on, 1968 in its life. And this replicates that super rare Porsche. So lightweight panels, where it, the fact it's got the, I think it's 2.8 now, this car. Um, mileage 83,000 miles. It's just interesting, instead of having a 2.7 RS sort of replica, to do a 911R is much harder and it really looks really good to me, guided at 70 to 80,000 pounds. Oh, there's so much I could cover in here. Lovely that Mini Cooper, I love that uh, TVO Tuscan Racer, Metro 6R4. Uh, Every time I see them, they get madder by the years as they roll by, but getting a lot of money now, 180 to 220,000 pounds for that. And then there's all the bikes to go for. These bikes, as I say, the sale is on Friday, and there's some Kawasaki triples that have caught my eye, very collectible. I, my pick of all the bikes here, one I would like to bid on, there's a Honda CBX there, the six cylinder bike. I recently did a video on one. But that is a UK bike with 6,000 miles only covered. That's super low mileage for a UK bike. Be very interested what it makes. It's guided at 14 to 15,000. I wouldn't be surprised if it went up to about 20,000. We are not covering a pink Ferrari California. So we'll move on here. VW Beetle. Why am I stopping at VW Beetle? Well, I've always thought the convertible version of these 
are quite a fun car. I've not seen one in this colour. This is one of the very last produced, 1977, and it was owned by Roger Daltrey um, of The Who. Now, he's owned it, yeah, 30 years he owned it. I don't know. I I think they're quite collectible, these, to me. They, they look the part. Yes, they're not the quickest things out there, but they just are of a period and guided at 28 to 34,000 pounds. Well, so many cars I haven't featured, but one I wanted to is this one, the Lamborghini Gallardo Balboni edition. I can remember when this came out, it's 2010, and Vanity Balboni was this um, test driver from the Countach and Diablo age at Lamborghini and a very a figurehead really for Lamborghini from that period. And they asked him, what would you do with the Gallardo for your special edition? And he lightened it. It had 550 horsepower. It went to two wheel drive. All uh, Gallardo up to this point had been four wheel drive. And this one, it was available with a manual gearbox, which this one has. And I don't know, it's from a previous period of Lamborghini because they've got so flamboyant with the Huracan and more and more horsepower. 550 horsepower, um, manual gearbox, V10, very special Lamborghini and incredibly rare. 250 were produced, but quite a few, the majority were had the paddle shift gearbox with manual. Only three were supplied to the UK and this is one of them. So yeah, 16,000 miles guided at 140 to 180,000 pounds. There was a California T over there. I haven't got time to feature it. The bikes are still arriving. I mean, some very special bikes have just been wheeled in. Look at this Kawasaki Z1. So this is the original Kawasaki Z1 900. I think it's 1973 or something of that iconic um, orange paint that sort of took over as a CB750. And then there's these MV Augustas 750 SS of Monza shaft drive, 40 to 60 thousand pounds. I think that um, MV's guided at same sort of value for this one. I could go on, but can I recommend you go to the Silverstone website, check all the bikes, all the cars are all on there, and remember these bikes go under the hammer tomorrow, Friday, and then the cars are all being sold on Saturday. So you have to register online if you want to bid. You can watch it online as well, it's on YouTube if you want to see it, the action yourself. But yeah, to you actually want to bid on the car, remember to register. So there you go, a very quick tour around the two halls and a bit of outside. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming along very soon. <laughs>